So an embryo is created the day after the sperm and the egg are mixed, and that will be classed as day one of the embryo development. We'll look at the embryo each day through from day one through to day six, and we will look at the embryo down the microscope and we will observe how many cells are within that embryo, and we will look at the shape and the size of those cells and give them a grade. This grade will then be relayed to the patient where we'll explain where it lies in terms of good quality, average or poorer quality. On day one of embryo development, we are looking at the embryo and looking to see how many of those embryos have normally fertilized. We expect to see two pronuclei within the embryo. One has come from the egg and one has come from the sperm. So this shows a normally fertilized embryo just at the single cell stage. We would expect around 60 to 70% of embryos to normally fertilize. The reason it is important to look at the embryos on day one are because these pronuclei both appear and disappear within a certain time frame. Once those pronuclei have disappeared, we can no longer differentiate which embryo has normally fertilized compared to one that hasn't. On day two of embryo development, we're observing the number of cells, so we would expect the embryo to be between two and five cells. It is important to look at the embryo at this stage because embryos which have missed that first cell division and are still at the one cell stage have a much lower chance of implanting and going on to form a live birth. It is also important to isolate those embryos that have six cells or more because studies have shown that those embryos that are developing more quickly than you would expect have been shown to have more chromosomal abnormalities and so therefore are less likely to result in a live birth. So as well as counting the number of cells, we also look at the evenness and the symmetry of those cells. So we are going to, so the more even and symmetrical the cells are, the better the grade we give that embryo. With every division an embryo cell makes, it can spew out some fragmentation. And again, the more fragmentation within an embryo, the lower the quality that embryo has. So the poorer the quality of an embryo, so if the cells are not even, if they are not symmetrical, and if there is a large amount of fragmentation, the lower the chances of implantation. On day three of embryo development, we would expect the embryos to be six cells or more. As well as counting the number of cells, we are also again looking at the symmetry of the cells and the evenness of them, as well as the level of fragmentation. At this point, we are also looking to see if there have been any abnormal cell divisions. So it can be the case that embryos can, what we call reverse cleave. So they can go from a six cell back to a five cell, for example. All of these abnormal cell divisions, again, are associated with lower implantation potentials. On day three, sometimes embryos also start compacting. This is a good sign and the stage of the next part of the embryo development. This is where the cells start blending together so you can no longer count the individual cells. On day four, some clinics do observe embryo development, some clinics do not observe embryo development. The reason for this is because it's a much more complex cell stage. So up until day three, the embryo has been developing mainly from the maternal genome. So that is from the genetics derived from the egg. From day three, embryonic genome activation has occurred, which is where the DNA from the sperm has also been activated. So from day three onwards, we would expect compaction to happen and the cells almost look like they are merging together and blending together. So they become what we call a premorula. This is where you can no longer count the number of cells. These then form what we call a morula. It's a very, very compact ball of cells that almost looks again like it's at the one cell stage. It's very difficult to grade an embryo at this stage because you can no longer see the shape and the size of the cells. You can sometimes see fragmentation, but this has less of an impact now than it did previously. On day five and day six, we'll be looking and grading the embryo at the blastocyst stage. This is a much more complex stage of development. So the embryo has now gone from a cleavage cell stage through the morula stage, and the embryo has now started to cavitate. So what we can see is we can see two different cell lines within this embryo. We can see the cells that will go on to form the placenta, which is called the trophectoderm, and we can also see the cell line that forms the fetus. This is called the inner cell mass. This is an absolute key stage because for one, we do not expect all embryos to form blastocyst. We normally see around 50 to 60% of embryos from day three make it to this stage. And this is because of the complexity of this process. 
Equally, not only getting to the blastocyst stage, but because we can now see those two different cell lines, we can grade both of those cell lines. So now you go from getting one either number or letter to grade your embryo to getting normally three different parts to each embryo's grading. At CRGH, we have a number followed by two letters. The number will denote how expanded that blastocyst is, so it's not really to do with the quality of the embryo, it's just to do with how advanced the embryo is. This is generally a numerical grading system from number one through to number six, with one being the earliest, going through to five being completely hatched out of its shell. Grade six is given to those embryos where we have physically performed the assisted hatching procedure. After the number comes two letters, the first letter is the quality of the cells that go on to form the fetal cells, and the second letter denotes the quality of the cells that will go on to form the placenta. These are generally given a letter from A through to E, A being the most excellent quality, down to E, which is the quality which is the poorest. It generally means that the cell line is either absent or it's degenerate. So day five and day six grading, that is the blastocyst grading, is imperative to your fertility journey. This is the stage when most transfers happen. It's the stage when most freezing happens. It is also the stage that if you are having PGTA or PGD, then this, the biopsy will also be taking place at the blastocyst stage. Blastocyst morphology grading is most certainly directly correlated with your implantation potential. So the higher and the better quality of your blastocyst, the more likely you are to have a healthy baby. Embryo grading is one of the tools that the embryologists use to select the embryo with the highest implantation potential. This is a mechanism which is used to help us choose the embryo which is most likely to give you a healthy baby. It does not mean that if you have poorer quality embryos or embryos that seem a little bit slow, that you will not have that chance to have a successful pregnancy. We understand how important embryo grading is to our patients. At CRGH, the embryologist will call the patient every day through from day one through to day six to ensure you get all the information you need. We appreciate this information can be overwhelming. So please always ask us any questions. There is never a silly question. If you want to be referred on to the nurse or the consultant, they can also call you during this time where your embryos are in the lab.